Section 7.2, similar polygons. We first start with similar figures. Two figures that have the same shape, but not necessarily the same size, are similar. If they're the same size, they are similar, but they also are congruent. For polygons to be similar, they must have two properties that make them similar. Number one, corresponding angles must be congruent. And number two, corresponding sides are in proportion. To determine if the sides are in proportion, we must first find a scale factor, or also known as a similarity ratio. That is the ratio of the lengths of the corresponding sides. And when they simplify, they need to all be the same ratio. On this slide, the given information is that these two figures are similar. They are the same shape, but not the same size. And what I can do is write a similarity statement very similar to the congruence statement. So I can write A, B, C, D is similar to E, F, G, and H. And that is the symbol for similarity. Therefore, I can state A, B, C, D is similar to E, F, G, H. When that's true, I know that I have corresponding angles that are congruent. Therefore, angle B, A, D is congruent to angle F, E, H. Angle A, B, C, is congruent to angle E, F, G. Angle B, C, D is congruent to angle F, G, H. And the last angle, C, D, A, is congruent to angle G, H, E. That's the first property of similar polygons. The second property is that the sides are in proportion. Therefore, I can write ratios of the left figure to the right figure. Or I can write it the right figure to the left figure. But the way I start my ratio is the way I complete all my ratios within the problem. Here I'm going to put the left figure ratio measures over the right figure ratio measures. So what I'm going to do is A, B over E, F. And when that ratio simplifies, it must equal AD over EH, BC over FG, and DC over HG. And since I started with my left figure first, all my measures of the segments start with my left figure on top and my right figure goes on the bottom. Again, I could do this the other way, but I must continue with that fashion all the way through the problem. As in congruent triangles, I don't need to have the figures to be able to set up my correspondences of angles and my correspondences of sides. All I need is the similarity statement. So here I'm given that triangle DEF is similar to triangle XYZ. Use this information to state the corresponding sides and angles. My sides are in proportion. Therefore, I have segment DE over XY. And when that simplifies, it needs to be equal to segment EF over segment YZ and DF over segment X, Z. And again, I had the left triangle over top of the right triangle, and I continued in that fashion all the way through the problem. These are my sides in proportion. Now I need to state my angles. My angles would be angle D would be congruent to angle X. Angle E congruent to angle Y. And finally, angle 
F congruent to angle Z. Now what I need to do is find the measure of corresponding sides and similar polygons. To do that, I want to determine the scale factor first, also known as the similarity ratio. This is the ratio of two known corresponding sides of the two polygons that are given. Then what I want to do is simplify that ratio. Next, I want to set that scale factor or similarity ratio equal to a ratio of another pair of corresponding sides. One of the sides will be known and one will be unknown. Then I want to solve that proportion by the cross product property. Let's look at an example. Here I'm given that DEFG is similar to PQRS find the values of X and Y. First, I know that angles of similar polygons are congruent. Therefore, angle E, which is my variable Y, is congruent to the corresponding angle in this figure, angle R, which is 240. Therefore, Y is equal to 240 degrees. Now what I want to do is find the value of X. To do that, I need to find a scale factor or similarity ratio. And what I have is segment DG is corresponding to segment PS. Therefore, since those two sides are known, I can find my scale factor. I'll just label that SF for scale factor. And I'm going to put the left figure over the right figure. Therefore, the rest of my problem will always have the left figure over the right figure segment measures. So here I'll have 12 over 18, simplifying. 6 goes into both. I'm going to get 2 over 3. To solve for x, I use my scale factor as my starting ratio and set the ratio of xe to rp as the other ratio. I'm going left over right, so that will be x over 6. Cross product, I get 3x equal to 12, or x is equal to 4 centimeters. On this example, I have two similar polygons. A, B, C, D, E is similar to I, F, G, D, H. They want us to complete the congruence and proportion statements. I can use the diagram or the similarity statement to do this. Here I have angle E, and I know angle E is congruent to angle H. I just can't state angle H because there's multiple angles at angle H. Therefore, I have to state angle I, H, D. Here I'm given that B, C is in a ratio with F, G. Therefore, I know that A, B must go over I, F. Here I have A, B and I, F. In number three, I have I, H over A, E. Now I know that G, D and my right diagram is going to be in a ratio with CD. And here I have GD and CD. On number four, I have AE in my diagram over IH. Therefore, I know that ED is going to be this segment over HD. Again, ED over HD. Angle B is corresponding to angle F. B, F. And angle F, G, D, F, G, D would correspond to angle C. Again, G corresponds to C. In this example, I want to prove that these two polygons are similar. If they are, I want to write the similarity statement and give the scale factor or similarity ratio. If they're not, I want to explain why. So I need to determine if two properties exist between these two figures. First, are corresponding angles congruent? Here, in the left figure, all angles are 90. In the right figure, all angles are 90. Therefore, I know that the corresponding angles are congruent. Number two, I need to determine if the sides are in proportion. I have two known corresponding sides in my figures. For a ratio to be set up, I need to make sure that I have the smallest segment of this figure over the smallest segment in this figure, the largest segment in this figure over the largest segment in this figure. 
That's the only possible way to make sure that they're in proportion. So remember, anytime I set up a ratio, I always have the smallest measure over the smallest measure, the largest measure over the largest measure, and of course, medium over medium. So let's set up a proportion. The smallest segment here is 21 over the smallest measure in this figure, which is 12, equals the largest in this figure, 36, over the largest in this figure, 16. Two ways to prove if they're equal. Cross product, if the values are equal, then they are in proportion, or I can just simplify the ratios. Here, probably easier just to simplify the ratios on this ratio. I have three that goes into both, which will give me seven over four. In this ratio, four goes into both, which will give me nine over four. Therefore, these ratios are not equal. Therefore, the sides are not in proportion. So these two figures are not similar. And that is because the sides are not in proportions. Again, on this slide, I want to determine if these two polygons are similar. Therefore, I still need to determine if corresponding angles are congruent. In this triangle, I have a 30 and 40 degree angle. I can find this angle by the triangle sum theorem. 30 and 40 is 70 from 180, leaves me 110. And here, I have a 110 and 40 degree angle. Again, I can find this angle by the triangle sum theorem. 110 and 40 is 150 from 180, leaves me 30 degrees. Therefore, corresponding angles are congruent, so that verifies property one. Angles are congruent. Number two, are the sides in proportion? Again, I want to set up a small to small, large to large, medium to medium. I'm going to go the top figure over the bottom figure. My smallest one in the top figure is 3.5, and I'll have that over the smallest in the bottom, which is 1.5. In the top figure, the medium one is 4.9 over the medium, which is 2.1. And the largest in the top is 9.8 over the largest in the bottom, which is 4.2. Of course, each one of these equal signs is a question mark. I have to determine if that is true. I'm going to multiply the top and bottom of each ratio by 10 to get whole numbers. That's going to give me 35 over 15 equals 49 over 21 and 98 over 42. Let's simplify the ratios. So I'm going to divide by 5 on my first ratio. That's going to give me 7 over 3. My second ratio, I'm going to divide by 7. That's going to give me 7 over 3. And my second one, I'm going to divide by 14. When I divide by 14, that's going to give me 7 over 3. So here, my sides are in proportion. My angles are congruent. And therefore, these two are similar. And my scale factor has already been determined for us, which is 7 over 3. Here we have polygons in each exercise that are similar. They want us to find the similarity ratio or scale factor of the first to the second figure. Therefore, our ratio must have these values over these values. Let's find our scale factor. Recall that I need to have small over small, medium over medium, and large over large. So in this figure, my smallest segment is 6, and that's the order it has to be in, 6 over the smallest segment here, 9. The middle segment is 8 over the middle segment, which is 12, and the largest segment, which is 12, over the largest segment, which is 18. Now, all I have to do is simplify each. First ratio, divide by 3, I get 2 thirds. Second ratio, divide by 4, I get 2 thirds. And the last ratio, I divide by 6, which is 2 thirds. And this had to occur to make the sides in proportion 
because these polygons are similar. So our scale factor is two-thirds. On our next figure, we know that these two are still similar. They want us to find the scale factor from the first to the second. So it's this side measures over that side measure. And what I have as a scale factor, again, is small over small, large over large, and medium over medium. So I'm going to have 8 over 14, 8 over 14, and 8 square roots of 2 over 14 square roots of 2. And when I simplify, 2 goes into each. That gives me 4 sevenths, 4 sevenths. The square root of 2s cancel out. I'm left with 8 fourteenths, which is still 4 sevenths. Therefore, our scale factor is 4 sevenths. And since these are similar figures, my sides had to be in proportion. On this slide, I know that the polygons are similar again. They want us to find the value of each variable. I have corresponding sides, and what I need to do is determine the scale factor. That is two known corresponding sides, then simplifying the ratio. Here I have x to 12, only one is known. I have 6 to y, only one is known. I have 10 to z, only one is known. My two known corresponding sides are 8 to 6. And I chose to put 8 over 6, so therefore the rest of the way through my problem, I'm going to have the left figure over the right figure. When I simplify, I'm going to divide both the top and bottom by 2. That's going to give me 4 thirds. Now I can set up proportions. I have 4 thirds equal to x over 12. And when I use the cross product, I'm going to get 3x equals 2. 48. Divide by 3 on both sides, I get x equal to 16. Again, I start with my scale factor, 4 over 3. And my other ratio is, again, left over right, 10 over z. Cross product, 4z equals 30. Divide by 4, z is equal to 30 over 4. And when I simplify, that's 15 over 2. On this figure, again, I'm given that triangle ABE is similar to triangle ACD. In other words, I have the small inserted triangle similar to the large triangle on the exterior. I still need to find a scale factor. To do that, I'm going to set up a ratio comparing the small triangle to the large triangle. And here, I have AE equal to 6, and that would be similar to, if I take a look at my statement, AE is similar to AD. They have a ratio that I can determine a scale factor from, because I will know the both sides. Therefore, AE is 6, AD is 6 plus 3, which is 9. Now I can set up my scale factor, which will be 6 over 9. Simplifying, divide both by 3, I get 2 over 3. Using that scale factor, I can determine the value of x. Again, it's small over large, so it's x over 15. That gives me 3x is equal to 30, or x is equal to 10. On our last example, you want to draw an enlargement of a design that is a point on a 3-inch by 5-inch card. You plan to draw on an 8.5 inch by 11 inch piece of paper. What are the dimensions of the largest complete enlargement you can draw? Now, to make this point, we have to make sure that the aspect ratio is the same. Therefore, it doesn't skew our design. So what we have to do is to set up two ratios to see which one fits. So we can take our first 3 over 8.5. They are our same dimension on the paper and then find the ratio as 5 to that ratio, 5 to an unknown variable. So here's my first ratio, 3 to 8.5, which is 3 over the improper fraction. Then I take 3 divided by 17 over 2. Then I take 3 times 2 over 17, and I get 6 over 17. I set that equal to 5 over the unknown ratio to set the same proportions. Then I simplify, and I get 6 
x equals 85 or x equals 14 and a sixth. But this can't work because our paper is only 11 inches large. So this would overflow that paper. So this can't work. This is not good for us. So now what we do is we try the other ratio. And we have to do this in every instance anyways to see which one fits best because we want the largest one. This one could have been larger or a better fit, but it was just too big. So now we try 5 over 11 and then set that up as 3 over x. And when I solve through by cross product, I'm going to get x equals 6 and 3 fifths or 6.6 .6 inches. And that is in my tolerance. And therefore, the largest design I can make is a 6 by 6 inch by 11 inches.